With me now is constitutional law expert Professor Anne Toomey from the University of Sydney. Anne Toomey, thanks so much for joining me. And what happens now? Well, the big issue is, first of all, Kevin Rudd being sworn in as Prime Minister by the Governor-General. Does she seek assurances from him beforehand that he will face the Parliament, which is a possibility? Uh, also, the other possibility there is that he might seek uh, an immediate dissolution of Parliament and an election before facing Parliament. So that's also a possibility. How does he do that? Uh, well, when he um, meets the Governor-General and she discusses this with him, he could give her an assurance that the, he would immediately ask for a, a dissolution of Parliament and an election. Uh, or he could say, I'm going to face the Parliament and um, face a vote of no confidence. Uh, but on either basis, it would be legitimate for the Governor-General to appoint him. Does he have to go to the Governor-General and say, I know I have the numbers on the floor to remain in government? Does he have to have those assurances before he goes to see her to be sworn in? Uh, no, he doesn't have to have them. Uh, the Governor-General might um, want to have at least some sorts of assurances. Uh, from her point of view in, in making this decision, she has to make it on the basis of who she thinks is most likely to hold the confidence of the House. Uh, now, given that Kevin Rudd is now the leader of the Labor Party, that gives him a certain degree of numbers on the floor of the House. And given that we've also had some um, representations of support from him from some of the crossbenchers, that at least gives him uh, probably ahead of anyone else, the greatest likelihood of holding uh, the support of the lower house. But then really, from the Governor-General's point of view, she'd prefer that it was tested on the floor of the Parliament. So she may well appoint Mr Rudd, but on the basis that he faced the Parliament. Uh, if he lost on the floor of the House, then he would either have to resign or call a, an election, and the most likely answer would be calling an election. Uh, but um, if he wins, he can uh, keep governing uh, until such time as he decides to call an election, which can be any time up until the 30th of November. So, and if that requirement is asked of him by the Governor-General to, to prove, if you like, on the floor of the House that, that he has the confidence of the House, how does that happen? Does he actually put the confidence motion himself? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, he could, she could ask him to put a motion of confidence in himself uh, and that's happened in the past. Um, in, in fact, if you remember back all the way to 1975, uh, Gough Whitlam actually moved a vote of confidence in himself in the Parliament in October 1975 when the Senate was um, proposing to defer supply. So it's a way of a Prime Minister showing or proving that he has confidence. So she could do that. Or she could just ask him to um, announce to Parliament that he's become Prime Minister and leave it to uh, the opposition or anybody else who wants to move a vote of no confidence. Um, and if nobody moves a vote of no confidence, then there'll be an assumption that he has confidence. So what options does the opposition have at the moment? Well, I'm, I'm pretty certain that the opposition would want to move a vote of no confidence if Mr Rudd himself doesn't actively move a vote of confidence. Uh, there are some technicalities, procedural technicalities about that. If the government itself, um, if a minister doesn't accept uh, Mr Abbott's motion of no confidence because he hasn't given notice of it, uh, he would have to get uh, standing order suspended in order to get the motion on and that means he needs an absolute majority to get standing order suspended. So the decision might actually be taken on the question of whether standing orders be suspended to allow a vote of no confidence. Right. If Mr Abbott lost that vote, uh, then that would be impliedly confidence in Kevin Rudd and therefore you wouldn't need the vote wouldn't of no confidence. proceed with the rest, okay. So um, the double dissolution option is there really, but, but in your mind, it's one that perhaps the, um, the incoming Prime Minister now, Kevin Rudd, might present to the Governor-General as a possibility. Uh, well, uh, to get a double dissolution, you need a trigger. Uh, and I'm not sure whether we have a trigger or not yet. Uh, so it may not be possible in this round. What's really happening is um, Tony Abbott's been looking at the double dissolution issue uh, in order to get his um, carbon tax thing through the Senate if the Senate's not willing to pass it. So I think that's more a future issue. I don't think we're looking at a double dissolution now. And how early or how late could the election be? Uh, the earliest date for an election is 3rd of August. Uh, and um, if we had an immediate dissolution now, the, the time frame is between about the 3rd of August or the 31st of August. Of course, it has to be on a Saturday, so it has to be one of those dates in between. Uh, if we don't have an immediate dissolution, if Kevin Rudd does have the confidence of the House and is able to govern, then it could be any time up until 30th of November, which is the very outside date possible. 
And Toomey, I guess you must have been watching these, uh, these comings and goings of the last 24 hours with great interest. What do you take from this? Uh, well, look, I think in the end what's interesting is that um, it's probably going to be very um, constitutionally um, uneventful uh, <laughs> to the extent that, look, everybody does try and comply with the rules. There are various points along the way where people could buck the system, but I think one of the great things about Australia is that people do respect the Constitution, uh, that we don't tend to have crises to the extent that people would much prefer to do the right thing. Uh, and I think that in the end, the way this will play out will be the same, that we're not going to have some kind of a massive constitutional crisis. People will comply with the basic principles and the rules. Um, if Kevin Rudd doesn't have support of the independents, we'll just have an election and the people will decide. Uh, if he does have the support of the independents, then he can govern a bit longer, but we'll still have an election and the people decide. In the end, democracy rules here and that's a good thing. And it sounds like it's, a, it's still a pretty robust system and it's working. It is working and, and I think that's terrific. I mean, if this sort of thing was happening in another country, yeah. you could imagine all sorts of horrible crises that really aren't going to happen. That, that's a really good thing to remember, you know, that, that if this sort of thing did happen in another country, you often see tanks in the streets and you, you don't have that here in Australia. It's a good thing to bear in mind, Anne. Thanks so much. You're welcome.